With the assassination of Marcus Livius Drusus, any hopes the Italians had of Roman enfranchisement vanished. Under the leadership of Quintus Popidius Silo, the Italian tribe known as the Marsi were the first to demonstrate a show of force. Silo had been a close friend of Drusus and likely felt some obligation to avenge the one person who had fought so hard for the Socii. The Marsi were quickly joined by the Marancini tribe, the Vestini tribe, and the Pelini tribe from within the Apennine Mountains. South of Rome, the Samnite tribe, led by Gaius Papius Mutilus, was joined by the Herpini tribe, the Lucanian tribe, the Apulia tribe, and the Frentani. Using Rome as her model, these combined Italian tribes created their own capital in the town of Corfinium, modern-day Corfinio, which they renamed Italia, or Italica. Construction of a proper forum, senate house, and basilicas began, as well as the creation of governmental offices which mirrored those of Rome. Quintus Popidius Silo and Gaius Papius Mutilus were elected as Italia's first consuls, independent of Rome. Silo was given command over Italy's northern theatre of war, and Mutilus commanded in the south. In the city of Rome, her third founder, six-time consul, and military commander extraordinaire, Gaius Marius, assumed the Senate would offer him command of the war against the Italian socii, which history would call the Social War. But, between Gaius Marius's attempted provocation of Mithridates of Pontus, his involvement with the demagogues, Saturninus and Glaucia, and his outrageous behaviour regarding Sulla's trophy, the Senate had grown suspicious of Marius's personal ambitions. They were not willing to place Marius at the head of another army which he could use to, once again, monopolise the office of consul. Command of Rome's wars always belonged to the sitting consuls, and by the start of the social war, Gaius Marius had been out of office for almost a decade. He was a man of yesterday, his health may have been in decline, and he was a private citizen. The Senate did not give armies to private citizens, and so supreme command of the social war went to the incoming consuls of the 90 BC year. The senior consul was a new man by the name of Publius Rutilius Lupus. Lupus was a nephew of Gaius Marius, and immediately requested his uncle serve as military legate. Just because Marius couldn't command an army was no reason to allow his military brilliance to go to waste. The co-consul was a patrician named Lucius Julius Caesar. This Caesar was the brother of Lucius Cornelius Sulla's first wife, and so Sulla served as military legate to Lucius Caesar. Although he railed against having such an inferior position, Gaius Marius did advise his nephew to further train his army before attempting to put them onto the battlefield. Lupus, however, ignored this advice, and marched north into Marsic territory, which was his assigned theatre of war. Choosing to split his army between himself and his uncle, Lupus ordered the construction of two bridges along the river Tolinus. But Lupus was unaware that, across the river, the Marsic commander, Silo, had laid a trap into which the inexperienced Lupus soon stumbled. When Gaius Marius, working on his own bridge, saw the corpses of his nephew's troops floating downstream, he quickly mobilized his forces and took the inadequately defended Marsic camp. With the death of Lupus, Marius attempted to take sole command of what remained of Lupus's army, but the Senate was losing its patience. They ordered Marius to command jointly with Quintus Servilius Caepio the Younger, who had served as praetor for the 91 BC year. It was whispered that Caepio had been responsible for the assassination of Drusus, and Marius was not keen to coordinate with him. Just as Caepio's father had once done to Malleus Maximus, by refusing to obey commands, Gaius Marius was now the petulant man unwilling to lower himself to the level of a young praetor with limited military experience. And so, left to his own intuition, Caepio the Younger made the tactical decision to withdraw from Marsic territory, into a more defensible position. In the second year of the Social War, with Caepio and Marius separated into two smaller armies, the Italian consul, Silo, unexpectedly abandoned his men, deserting to the army of Caepio. As a sign of good faith, he defected to Caepio's camp with the full war chest of gold and silver which he had liberated from his own Marsic camp. Silo also offered Caepio his two young sons as hostages. Convinced that the Italians could not win against Rome, Silo encouraged Caepio to strike the Marsic camp while they were leadless, and still in disarray. Leaving his defensible position, Caepio marched his army out, and charged headlong into the ambush Silo had laid for him. Caepio's army was slaughtered to the man. The war chest turned out to be nothing but cheap metals which had only been plated in silver and gold. Silo's two sons, it was discovered, were stolen slave children he had dressed in the clothing of the Italian nobility and Quintus Servilius Caepio the Younger, who Silo believed was responsible for the death of his friend Drusus, was killed by Silo, himself. 
Silo next turned his attention to bringing down Gaius Marius. Taking down the third founder of Rome would be a coup for the Italian cause. Unfortunately for Silo, taking Marius would not prove to be as easy as had defeating Caipio. The military genius, with only half an army, refused Silo's every attempt to provoke him into open battle. Marius, finally left in sole command of his army, just sat tight and defended his territory. In the south, Lucius Cornelius Sulla continued his service as legate to the consul, Lucius Caesar. The Samnites, under the leadership of the Italian consul, Mutilus, laid siege to the town of Isena, or modern-day Isernia. Although Lucius Caesar immediately sent a detachment of his army to relieve the besieged town, they were quickly defeated by the Samnite legions. Lucius Caesar lost 2,000 men. After awaiting reinforcements, Lucius Caesar then marched his entire army against the Samnite leader, who had moved to take the town of Aserai. Mutilus, however, made the fatal error of facing Lucius Caesar's army on the battlefield and he lost 6,000 men. Lucius Caesar's victory at Aserai marked the first substantial defeat of the Italian Socii, and represented a slight turning point in the tide of the ongoing war. Still determined to lift Iserna's siege, Lucius Caesar next marched his entire army through the Melva Forge. Because the Melva Forge was an ideal location for an ambush, it was a path the Italians expected the Romans to forego. But Lucius Caesar, making certain his army was prepared for an ambush, entered the Melva Forge. When the ambush came, Lucius Caesar's forces fought ruthlessly, exiting the forge, and making it safely to the nearby town of Tenum. Later, upon arriving at the town of Isena, Lucius Caesar's forces were insufficient to lift the siege. Fortunately, the presence of his army did lift the spirits of the city's captive citizens, who renewed their resolve to hold out against the Italian socii. As Lucius Caesar prepared for a protracted siege of Iserna's besiegers, he ordered Lucius Cornelius Sulla to take a detachment of his army and march north. Sulla was ordered to assist his old friend, and now political rival, Gaius Marius. Together, Sulla and Marius defeated many of the Marsic armies, as well as the Marancini legions. Following this joint success, Sulla returned to the army of Lucius Caesar, where he was commanded to reorganize the legions for the next year's deployment. Because the current war season was over, Lucius Caesar quickly headed back to Rome. Before the end of his consular term, he needed to enact a piece of legislation which he hoped would change the tide of the social war. His bill, called the Lex Julia de Civitate Latinis a Socies Danda, granted Roman citizenship to any Italian allies who had not yet taken up arms against Rome. Lucius Caesar's new law, after it passed the voting assemblies, changed the course of the social war. Rome's newest citizens were immediately obligated to fight Rome's enemies, even if those enemies were Italian brothers in arms. When Lucius Caesar's term as consul ended, he made no attempt to stand for an additional consular term, nor did he fight to retain command of his army. As a conservative patrician, Lucius Caesar followed the Mos Maiorum by willingly laying down the symbols of his powerful office, then offering his services as a mere legate to one of the New Year's incoming consuls. For the Optimates, the political party to which Lucius Caesar belonged, the success of Rome was more important than any one man's individual rank and title.